Saudi unveils a plan to double its industrial exports, and National Bank of Kuwait posts its highest ever profits. You're watching The Daily Brief with Forbes. I'm Ramia Faraj. Saudi Arabia has rolled out the national industrial strategy aimed at doubling its industrial export value to $148.3 billion by 2030. It covers 12 subsectors with more than 800 investment opportunities worth $266.2 billion. The new plan will also bring $346.1 billion of additional investment to the sector. The strategy also aims to increase factories from 10,640 presently to 36,000 by 2035. National Bank of Kuwait, the country's biggest lender by assets, posted the highest net profit in its history in Q3 of $438.9 million. That's 45% higher year on year. NBK says its operating environment improved, supported by higher oil revenues and rising consumer spending. Revenue for the quarter came in at $880.68 million versus $736.32 million in the previous quarter. Total assets as of end September grew by 6.8% year-on-year to reach $111.82 billion. Aramex has acquired Access USA Shipping, a global tech-driven platform that enables cross-border e-commerce. It was an all-cash purchase for $265 million. The transaction marks Aramex's largest acquisition to date. MyUS will be fully integrated into Aramex's business, operating as a business unit within the company's courier business segment. MyUS will retain its brand name and will be complementary to Shop and Ship, Aramex's subscription-based last mile e-commerce solutions platform. The acquisition will further strengthen Aramex's cross-border express business. Mubadala Investment has taken a stake in Skyborne Renewables alongside global infrastructure partners. The acquisition of a 100% interest in Skyborne Renewables provides Mubadala and GIP with access to the largest private offshore wind developer globally. Mubadala didn't reveal the size of its stake or the value of the acquisition. The Mubadala investment also includes the acquisition of a stake in GIP's interest in Blue Point Wind. It's an innovative 1.6 gigawatt offshore project in the U.S. Egypt's B2B e-commerce platform MaxAB has secured $40 million in a pre-Serie B equity round, bringing the company's total investment to date to $102 million. New investors include Silver Lake, British International Investment and Disrupt AD, the investment arm of ADQ's venture platform, in addition to other existing investors. The raised funds are set to fuel expansion across the MENAP region. MaxAB connects food and grocery retailers to suppliers in Egypt and Morocco. The biggest jump in food prices since 1980 pushed British inflation back into double digits last month, matching a 40-year high hit in July in a new blow for households grappling with the cost of living crisis. The consumer price index rose by 10.1 percent in annual terms in September. Food and non-alcoholic beverage prices were the biggest driver of inflation in September as they rose by 14.5 percent. The surge in European gas prices added to post-COVID supply chain bottlenecks and labor shortages, boosting prices. Nestle's sales surged in the first nine months of this year as the maker of Nespresso capsules, Purina Pet Food and haagen ice cream raised its prices in response to soaring inflation. The Swiss global food giant reported total sales of $69.1 billion between January and September, up 9.2 percent from the same period last year. Pricing was up 7.5 percent over that period. Nestle says this was on the back of significant cost inflation. Let's take a look now at today's Forbes Real-Time Billionaires ranking. It tracks the daily ups and downs of the world's richest people. Our biggest winner today is Mukesh Ambani, up $3 billion with net wealth of $88.3 billion. Our second biggest winner is Jeff Bezos, up $2.6 billion with net wealth of $139.8 billion. And our third place winner is Warren Buffett, up $2.1 billion with net wealth of $99.1 billion. Check out our website and our social media for all of the latest billionaires news. Global carbon dioxide emissions from burning fossil fuels are expected to rise by just under 1% this year. The International Energy Agency says a strong expansion of renewables and electric vehicles prevented a much sharper rise. 
CO2 emissions are on course to increase by nearly 300 million tons to 33.8 billion tons this year. That's a far smaller rise than their jump of nearly 2 billion tons in 2021. I'm Ramia Faraj. This is The Daily Brief. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.